So um, there's some little bit there about these matrices. I won't get into that. Um, and there's a thing here, which we'll see later, that um, you can write simultaneous equations as matrix equations. And then there's methods from this chapter that can help you solve simultaneous equations. OK, so let's introduce these things, these matrices. Uh, this would be an example of a matrix. Um, so you should be familiar with the concept of a function. A uh, function is a mathematical object that takes an input and produces an output. The functions you would have seen last semester were functions of a single variable in which you put in one number and you get out one number. So now that could be written as you put in number x and you get out a number f of x. So for example, when the function is the squaring function, you put in the number, say, uh, 6, and you get out the number 36. So here are the set of inputs, the numbers you, the things you can put in, and the set of outputs are both real numbers. And you can write that a function goes from real numbers to real numbers. But there's nothing stopping us defining functions on sets other than real numbers. The only thing you need is input and output. So for example, you could have the set of students in this class and um, an appropriate set where the set of your student numbers live. And you could have a function from the students sending you to your student number. Or you could have uh, the you could have the inputs are the students in this class and the outputs are uh, live in the dates and the output could be your birthday input output. So a simple extension of the set of real numbers the number line is a set of points on the plane, and we call this R squared, and it's the set of what you might I'm going to call these things two vectors. Now there's some technical thing that's two vectors, but I'm fairly sure you're not going to come across it. When I say a two vector, I just mean a vector with um, two numbers in it. So this, the plane, we denote or two. And really, it just means it's a pair of two numbers. So for example, two, three. Now there is a subtlety where really it's the set of points and... No, it's okay. Right. You can extend again to the set of points in space, and we call this R to the tree. And what I'm talking about is rather than putting in one number in and getting one number out, we'll talk of sending, um, putting a list of numbers, in other words, a vector in and a vector out. And we're actually going to see eventually that actually that's what a matrix is. It's a, a certain type of function that takes in a list of numbers, a vector, and spits out a list of numbers, uh, another vector. In this study, in this section, we study a certain class of functions between the line plane and space and bigger. So we're also going to, you can also talk about or to the power of four, that'd be a vector with a list of four numbers. Can visualize it, but a perfectly well-defined uh, mathematical object. And in general, or to the n. So a list of n real numbers. And we're gonna study what are called uh, linear maps. Now I'm gonna write down a technical thing about linearity. It's not a big massive deal, but the, the functions we're gonna look at because we're talking about vectors and vectors can be added and multiplied by a constant. Uh, these functions are what I call linear if they have this property. So a1 is a vector, uh, k is a scalar, a2 is another vector. Now maybe I'll throw some arrows on them. Usually we won't actually write the arrows anymore. Now usually what I'm going to write is not the case. So if the, if, a, if the a's and k's were just numbers and say if f was sine, what I'm writing is not true. If the a's and k's were numbers and the f was squaring, what I'm writing is not true. But in this case, where the a's and the a's are vectors, the k is a is a scale, is a number, and it turns out that the functions we're going to study are what I call linear, so they have this property. And it's a very, very nice property. It makes things nice. So it turns out if you write things uh, elements of the line, like this that's a one by one matrix elements of the plane like this this vertical way and elements of space like this then these linear maps can be written as matrices and these functions are all multiplying by a matrix okay now we have to we haven't said what matrix multiplication is or anything um we'll just do the easiest example is when you go from r to r um 
then that will be a one by one matrix, which is basically just a number. So it'll just be f of x equal to a constant times x. And they're the only linear functions from real numbers to real numbers. And a lot of mistakes the students make are assuming that you have linearity, that you can kind of multiply out a function. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Like you might think, maybe is it the case that sine of x plus y is equal to sine of x plus sine of y? Or you might think that maybe sine of 3x is equal to 3 sine x. So this would be to this would be to say that sine is linear. Um, and it's just not the case. Okay, it's only functions of this form um, if you're talking one number in and one number out. But you get kind of, uh, and indeed, indeed, if it's a vector, this is what you're talking about. Okay, abstract at the moment. And well, this is going to be quite an abstract chapter anyway. Okay, so these are the kind of things we're going to be looking at. So this is one number in, one number out. Now this one will just be multiplying by a constant. Okay, this one will be two numbers in and one number out. And this one, so this goes two to one, will be multiplying by a one by two matrix. So that'll be a matrix of the form uh, A, B. So you multiply by a matrix of this weird form. We'll eventually see this. This one looks like two numbers in, two numbers out. And if it's linear, it'll be multiplication by a matrix, say A, B, C, D. And this one, say you have three points in, three points out. This will be multiplication by a matrix, say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and this F not being the same as that F. See, all those numbers are, uh, the, all those letters are, are just real numbers. Okay. So examples of matrices. So a matrix, at the moment, it's it's connected with a function, a linear function, but I haven't actually said how to do matrix multiplication. So all of this is kind of meaningless. So these matrices are rectangular arrays of numbers, something like this. Um, say this thing, have, we, we describe the size of it. It's the number of rows by the number of columns. Now, Students sometimes get confused between rows and columns. What I would say is that columns are vertical. That's how you remember. Because you could like you could say those things are rows. It'd be wrong. But you'd never call them columns. They're rows. Okay. So if we look at the size of it, this has two rows and two columns. This has two rows and one column, and this has two rows and three columns. And the entries are just real numbers, okay? So what do you got? A matrix with n rows and n columns is set to have dimension or size n by m or b and n by m matrix. For, so as we've written below, uh, they're the sizes of them. Um, you will see that if you're like a two by three matrix, this is going to take in three numbers and spit out two. So multiplying by C is going to take in three numbers and spit out two numbers. You'll eventually see that. So what's this funny thing? Just, just means, well, this is the set of all possible uh, three vectors. So stuff like a, although we're writing it a bit funny now, aren't we? So this, I'm just gonna write three vectors. So, you take in a three vector and you spit out a two vector. A square matrix is what you think it is. Uh, a is a square matrix, same number of rows and columns. Okay, two matrices of equal size may be added together to produce another matrix of the same size. Now, um, I could go into a discussion about what this represents. Um, maybe I should do that. Okay, maybe I should do that. So take a vector. Okay, uh, and take two copies of that vector. And suppose you, and I'm going to put a third copy of it here. Okay, so suppose you take this vector and you apply the function 
a to it. Well, you multiply it by the matrix A. And you take this copy and you multiply it by B. Now what you can do then is you can add these two together and you can form the vector AV plus BV. So I'm saying, so this actually defines a function. Take the vector V and spit out this yoke. And it turns out that this yellow vector, uh, this yellow function is uh, basically formed by multiplying by a plus b. So it's kind of similar to like, what the hell is sine of x plus x squared? Well, you take x, you find sine x. You take x, you find x squared. You add the sine x and x squared, and that's a new function. x is sent to sine x plus x squared. It's a similar story. I'm possibly making it more, sound more complicated than it is. Uh, certainly for ye, it's not going to be difficult. So what, what you just have to be able to do is add matrices together. Now, the thing is here, notice that, so the vector you put in is the same size. It's the same thing, so it's definitely the same size. And if you're to add vectors together, these have to be the same size. You can't add like a two vector to a three vector. It doesn't make sense. So what that means is, both A and B have to be the same size to add them together because the size is determined. So for example, say this vector is a, a two vector and say this is a three vector. So that means that A, um, if, it take, if it takes in two numbers and spits out three, oh yeah, so that means it's a three by two matrix. And B has to do the same because this has to be size 3 as well, and V has to be 2. So the size of B has to be 3 by 2. So the only way you can add them together is if they have the same size. It just doesn't make sense if they don't. If the, if the number of columns is different, well, that doesn't make sense because you have to put in the same vector. And if the number of rows is different, you're adding like a 3 vector and 2 vector. It doesn't make sense. This only works if they have the same size. So it is complicating things, I will admit. But um, it, look, it answers any question you might have. And I'm just saying here, it's actually very easy. So for example, we'll just do an example here. Say the matrix 1, 2, 3, 6, plus the matrix 0, minus 4, 2, 1. You just add them component-wise. So the 1 plus the 0 is 1. The 2 plus the minus 4 is minus 2. The 3 plus the 2 is 5. And the 6 plus the 1 is 7. So it works exactly like you think. Okay, uh, the zero matrix has only zero. It's just like a uh, number zero for adding things. So if you take any matrix plus zero, now I'm going to write, um, I've no good standard notation here. I could put the size of it. I won't bother, I'll just put a line under it. it signifies not the number zero, it's the matrix containing all zeros. It's like the number zero. Uh, when you add zero, you get the same thing. And of course, the order of addition doesn't matter. Okay. Any matrix may be multiplied by a scalar. Now, the previous two things actually mean that matrices themselves are vectors. Because vectors actually are things that you can add and scale and multiply. But Because uh, a matrix is, it's, it, it is actually just a list of numbers. It's just they're in a funny order. Look, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, okay. So a matrix may be multiplied by scalar. We'll just do this with an example. So say you have a matrix 8, 0, 3, minus 1, 2, 4, and you want to multiply it by 3, you just multiply everything by 3. So 3 by 8 is 24, 3 by 0 is 0, 3 by 3 is 9, 3 by minus 1 is minus 3, 3 by 2 is 6, 3 by 4 is 12. Just something like that. And um, that's easy. Uh, by definition, minus a means multiply everything by minus a. So a minus b means a plus minus b. Okay, and then there's some obvious kind of properties here. Um, first one says order of addition doesn't matter. Second thing is something called associativity, which failed, for example, for the cross product. Um, third thing is called distributivity. Fourth thing is another distributivity. The fifth thing is another associativity. A minus a is the zero, met is the zero matrix. And zero times a matrix is the zero matrix. 
So this is like ordinary addition and multiplication kind of. We have something called the transpose. Now you're lucky I'm not going to be able to just explain to you what the transpose is. All I can say is that there are scenarios down the track where the, not in this module, but later on where this is very, very useful. So I'm just going to say how you calculate it. I'm not actually going to say what it is. You swap rows and columns. OK, and then it has some properties. Um, so, for example, here, look, the first row. Sorry, that's OK. Uh, I, don't, I don't want to do that. Way. Although you get the same thing. First row, one, two, becomes the first column. And the first, sorry, the second row, three, four, becomes the second column. And in terms of order, like where is the first row, it works in this way. So the thing up the top, this is the first row, first column. And so like in terms of a direction of where the row goes, it goes one to two. So if this is the first row, it's kind of order one, two. And then um, it goes down like that. Like you could possibly get a bit of confusion where you put, I don't know, you, instead of doing one, two, you do two, one. Like maybe you work from the bottom. I'm saying it just works like this. Um, a matrix is said to be, conf A is meant to be conformable with a matrix B. If the dimensions, okay, now this is just about, can you multiply these things together? Now this should actually be explained, but in the end we will uh, figure it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to do it with specific numbers. For example, so let's say that A is equal to 3 by 2 and B is equal to 2 by 4. Okay. So if A is, now I shouldn't say A is equal to, that's A is a matrix, not equal to 3 by 2. I'm saying it has size 3 by 2. Okay, now what this means is that A takes in two numbers and spits out 3. So we should start with the two vectors. And A takes in two numbers and spits out three numbers. Okay. Now what we can do then this is multiplying by a. This should nearly be b first. Hmm. I'm going to have to change this around. So this is going to be b. So I'm going to have to change it around a bit to make it work. So b takes in 4 and spits out 2. There we go. And now what we can do is because B spits out two numbers, A, because it is three by two, is able to take in the two numbers that B spits out, take them as an input and produce three numbers. Okay, so all together we have a function that go, takes in four numbers and spits out three. That's called composition. And this is what's called, uh, now the technical term be A after B. We just call it AB. And AB has size, it takes in four and spits out three. So it's size three by four. So I, I'm saying B takes four numbers, spits out two. You can give those two numbers to A and it'll spit out three. So if you do A after B, um, which is the same as what's called AB, and that's going to be what matrix multiplication is, altogether you're taking in four and spitting out three. Now let's make this a bit easier. When you're actually multiplying two, say you're multiplying two matrices together, say you're multiplying A by B. Um, so basically I'm saying this is what multiplication is. It's what's called composition. So you look at the sizes of A and B, 3 by 2, you can put in a by there, that's okay, and b is 2 by 4. If the middle numbers match, you can multiply them together, and what you get out is a 3 by 4 matrix. Okay, if these middle numbers don't match, it won't work. So for argument's sake, um, let's say uh, we had another matrix C, which was, say, um, well, C's in the wrong place. 
say we had another matrix C, which was 3 by 4. Now C takes in four numbers as well. But C spits out three numbers. And unfortunately, A can't do anything with three numbers because A takes in two numbers. So in this case, AC is not defined. We should have said, um, maybe I'm going to go back. We'll do it up the top here. So pause there in a second, go back up here. Um, if, actually we'll go back again. So when we were down here, we just said they have to be the same size. What if, what if I ask you to add matrices that are, add matrices that are different sizes? So if you A plus B and A and B are different sizes, different sizes well the word is it's undefined it just doesn't make sense to add them they have to be the same size now to multiply them you this is what you need that the middle numbers are the are the same and if the middle numbers are the same you can multiply them um but if the middle numbers are not the same as with a and c so if you do a and c you get the three by two for a but i'm saying c is three by four and it just doesn't work it doesn't make any sense so you can't multiply them together we still haven't told you how to multiply them yet um we'll get there eventually Okay, um, now there's some things we might notice. Like you can't multiply a three by two by a three by two. Um, probably do that over here. So could you multiply a three by two by a three by two? So say A by B, and suppose that A was a three by two, and suppose B was a three by two. You cannot multiply these. Those numbers do not match, so you can't multiply them. So you have to remember when you're adding matrices, they have to be the same size. But in general, unless they're square matrices, um, you can't multiply together um, matrices that are the same size. Yeah. So you can do three by three by three by three. That's fine. But 3 by 2 by 3 by 2 is not going to work. Only a notion of multiplication between conformable matrices is considered. You can make up your own matrix multiplication. That might be something that's studied, but not in this module. Uh, in this case, when you multiply, yeah, we've seen this already. Um, if the middle numbers match, you get out an N by M matrix. So... You can only multiply a by b if the number of well whatever it is so here we do this we could just do the same thing so if these numbers match you get out an m by m um now here's a weird thing you might be able to multiply a by b but b by a you mightn't be able to do so for example you can do two by three by three by four because these numbers match and you'll get out a two by four, that's fine. But if you do it the other way around, you have a four here and a three here, they do not match, so you can't multiply them together. So that's really weird, you can do, you might be able to do A by B, but not B by A. Um, if you have two square matrices, they can be multiplied together to get another square matrix, but the order of multiplication is important you will see that AB is not the same as BA. So this is what's called commutivity for real numbers. It fails for uh, matrices. It also fails for uh, the vector product. And be very careful when you're, uh, when you're calculating A squared and A cubed. So you might be tempted when you see A squared, say, say for example, uh, A is equal to one, zero, three, seven. And, and you say maybe A squared Air sure it's just going to be 1 squared, 0 squared, 3 squared, and 7 squared. But I'm saying that's not necessarily the case. 
And we're going to, when you see, you might say, why haven't you showed us yet how to multiply the matrices? Because it's kind of tricky and I need to explain this to see where it's going. So A means A multiplied by A, which is not going to be the same as squaring everything in A. And similarly, A cubed, now how you'd find A cubed is you'd find A squared first and then multiply that by A. Um, all of these things above make sense if you talked about them as functions. But if you talk about BA, then actually A acts first. Okay, so let's um, explain how this is done. I think if, if you want to uh, understand further, I think I'll be sending you a link. If, if you, So I'm going to show you basically now how the multiplication works. And if you want to say, well, why is that the case? Uh, I, I'll give you something, but I, I won't go through it here. So take two matrices that you can multiply together. Or, or and you end up with an N by M. Um, so you end up with a, an M by M matrix. And it turns out that these are the entries. Now, this formula is a bit too hard for us at the moment. Uh, and we're going to see it really with examples. But basically, you've got this idea of you're multiplying rows by columns. And remember, the rows are just vectors. Think about it. They're just the rows, just list the numbers. And a column is list the numbers. And how you multiply them together is with the dot product. Um, so as I said, we'll do we'll do examples to kind of explain this. The general case here, it's kind of explaining here, but trust me, it's better just to see it with an example. So uh, we'll do a couple of examples. A one by two, so that's one row, two columns. Let's say uh, seven, eleven by two by one. So let's say uh, fourteen, one. Okay. So when you're, if you've got two matrices to multiply together, the first thing you're going to do is analyze their size. So this is one by two. And this is two by one. If the middle numbers match, you can multiply them together. And if they're not, you just simply say it's undefined. Now the numbers that are left over is the size of the matrix you get out. So here you get a one by one matrix. So we're going to get a one by one matrix. So it's just going to have one row, one column. It's just actually going to be a single number. Now, how you calculate this now is you do, you go through. Now, there's only one row, one column. So you're going to multiply the row in the first matrix by the column in the second matrix. And it's going to be multiplied together in the sense of that product. And I'll go slowly here. Um, so you're going to do 7, 11, dot product 14, 1. So the way it should work would be 7 by 14 plus 11 by 1. So 7 by 14 plus 11 by 1. And then whatever the hell this is equal to. Um, 7 by 14 is 70, 98 plus 11, I think, is 109. So it's a 1 by 1 matrix containing the number 109. And it's uh, equivalent to a real number. Okay, let's look at another example. So one by two. So how about minus seven, uh, six by a two by two matrix. So let's take, I'm picking random numbers here. Two minus one minus two, six. Okay, so again, the first thing we do is we analyze the sizes of the matrix, the matrices. So this one is row one, sorry, one row, one uh, two columns, and this is two rows, two columns. Do the middle numbers match? Yes, they do. So that means they can be multiplied together. What size matrix are we going to get out? A one by two. Now, what I recommend is you, you set up a one by two matrix. So that's uh, one row, two columns. So one row, two columns, like that. So that's one row and two columns. So now you go through each of the, what I call cells and say, what row, what column? So this one here, for example, is row one, column one. Of this new matrix, it's there's only one row and it's in the first column. So you're gonna do row one dot column one. And this one is still row one, but it's column two. So you're gonna do row one in the first, um, matrix dot product column two in the second matrix. 
So the first the first entry, the first cell, the row one, that column one. So that's the minus seven, six by the two minus two. Row one, column one. So like a dot product, minus seven by two is minus 14. Plus six by minus two is minus 12. Now the other cell is row one, column two. That's row one, column two, uh, like a dot product. So minus seven by minus one is seven, plus six by six is 36. And now we can just tidy that up. That's a pair of numbers. So minus 14 minus 12 is minus 26, and seven plus 36 is 43. Okay, we'll do another example. Now remember, of course, if anything is too fast, you can pause me. So two by two by two by one. So let's go with one, zero, three, minus four by a two by one. And let's say three, four. Now this is kind of the classic example, really, of what you're looking at, because this is a two by two, well, sorry, I'm gonna write it down below. This is a two by two. And we said that a two by two matrix takes in two numbers and spits out two numbers. So three fours, the two numbers it spits, uh, takes in, it's gonna spit out two. But let's do it formally. So this is two rows, one column. And as, as we see, these middle numbers agree. So you can multiply these together. And what you're gonna get out is a two by one. So you're gonna get out something with two rows, but only one column. So something like this. Okay, so this first cell here is row one, column one, and this cell here is row two, column one. So up top, row one, column one, and down here, this is going to be row two, column two. Okay, so I'll do the top cell. Row one by column one. So one by three is three, plus zero by four is zero. So maybe I've spaced a little bit slower there. So one by three plus zero by four. That's what that product means. And then the bottom one is row two by column one, three by three plus minus four by four. And then we can tidy it up. It's not a fraction now, it's a, a pair of numbers. So one by three is three plus zero by four is zero. So just get three. And then the bottom one, three by three is nine, minus 16 uh, is that minus seven. Okay. And here you see two numbers taken in, three, four, two numbers spit out, three and minus seven. Um, now in BEMDAS, it's just a small thing. The transpose is considered an exponential. So if you see A, B transpose, you do the transpose before the multiplication. So it means this, do the transpose first. Okay. I think we're just going to, uh, that's all our theory and we'll have a bank of examples in the next video.